Today's video is going to be a what I will buy or repurchase again tag video. I was tagged by Colorful Noir. I think she tagged me like in November or something. It was a while ago. It almost feels like it's a great 2020 roundup of things, but not only just because of 2020, some of these things I've owned or used for years before. So these are just really a summary of things that I find are forever favorites, basically. Starting off with skincare, these two items I have started incorporating into my rotation of skincare. You guys know also I only use very clean makeup on my face and clean uh, skincare as well. So Anna Marie Borlin is a German company that makes skincare that is very very clean as far as I understand and I have started using their sensitive line toner. It's not completely watery like most toners are. This one has a bit more viscosity but it's not very gel-like either. It's kind of in between which is perfect because it actually makes your skin very hydrated and in the summer I can probably get away with just this as my moisturizer. Regenerative eye cream. Um, and I love the packaging of this. I just find that it's so easy to dispense because it's like this. So I put it directly under my eyes. It has more of a very fluid consistency, which is very different from my last eye cream that I used, which is very thick. I don't mind either, but I just find that this is easy to carry and easy to put on. And on some days, especially for me, I just need hydration more than um kind of more than a thicker consistency almost like i need less of the fat more of the water so the next category is nail care i mentioned in a video recently that i don't really do my nails my nails are usually just plain but ever since I discovered Madame Glam, which is a gel nail polish company. Their products are nine free, cruelty free, and vegan. And I particularly love that they're nine free, which means that they are made without the nine most common toxins out there that you find in uh, conventional gel polish or pol polish in general. So I've been loving pampering myself and doing my own nails. It's just been really great to have beautiful looking nails that are hard wearing. Like I do a lot of things with my hands. They don't chip, they don't peel, they don't do anything like that. Well, at least for two weeks. In fact, my very first time I did my red set, it lasted over three weeks and I really had to go at it to try to remove it, which is why I also ended up getting their uh, gel polish remover, which really helped a lot. This is the little lamp thingy the led lamp thingy uh it's very very easy to carry it's usb powered and uh, some of the most favorite shades that i have tried so far is white lace this is their milky white color it has kind of a little shimmer it's almost like a lavenderish white it's very very pretty very excited to try their other milky colors that i have from them on this hand i have perfect white underneath so just a plain white solid polish underneath and then I kind of design the top marbling effect, like the shiny metallic sheen on top with these two, which are Good Fortune and Year of Glam. See how beautiful and how like kind of marbly looking they are. They're metallic looking. So I've talked about magnetic lashes on my channel for a while now. I've convinced a few of my girlfriends themselves to try it. A few of you have tried it and loved it. It's kind of a hit or a miss depending on how well it works on your eyes uh, i mean it's your eye shape as well as your um you know the the type of um natural lashes that you have i definitely recommend using mascara underneath just so that it has some grit for the magnetic lashes to hold on so the type of magnetic lashes that i prefer are the ones where it's magnetic on top and on the bottom so you have two strips on each eye. The thing is Ardell is discontinuing their line where it's like just magnets on top and on bottom. They've started just doing the eyeliner version which I don't like and apparently the reviews are not that great. So I still try to stick with their old design. Whenever I find it, I'll buy it. And if I can't find it, then all I have to do is that I have to just buy two sets of their regular lashes. So I just basically have to stick two sets together, which sucks because then you're paying double the price. I think it's still worth it for me because one pair of these, like these are, I've 
been wearing them since last year. So they last a very long time as long as the magnets are still intact on the lash. I've gotten so good at putting them on that I can have my lashes on so fast. In fact, the mascara part takes probably a lot longer, in fact, because it needs drying, drying time. So I highly recommend uh, magnetic lashes, especially if you're used to doing uh, extensions and if you can't go back because of lockdown, which is the case last year and probably this year too, uh, then definitely consider magnetic lashes or at least try them. So another lifestyle item that I wanted to talk about is the massage gun that we purchased uh, last year and it's been super handy. Uh, this one, we just found it on Amazon. It was just one of the popular ones that uh, my husband's friends have tried and they recommended it to him, so he bought it. Uh, so this one seemed to work really, really well. Um, it has a good weight to it. So far, it's the quality has been amazing. I don't think we'll ever be able to live without a massage gun, not because we use it all the time, but whenever we needed it, it's when we are already so like, you know, the shoulder is so out of place or the neck is so out of place or you have like back pain from working on the computer all day long or sitting or, or standing all day long. Those are some of the things that are very common for any age, honestly. And sometimes you just don't have access to your massage therapist or to your chiropractors on like a daily basis, you know what I mean? Like you will, you can make an appointment to go there uh, periodically, but on a daily basis, when you have these pains and you just want a little bit of relief, this really does give you that. Obviously you still need someone to help you with, like especially if you're working on your back or shoulders, but it really is much easier than you trying to use your own knuckles and you know, elbows to work on someone. You just have to guide it basically. So another lifestyle item that I think is a no brainer. I think a lot of people already have them. Bluetooth earbuds, especially with COVID. In my case, I have an iPhone, so I use Siri to, you know, do a bunch of things like call people, text people via voice command, like without having to use my hands, right? So it's super, super handy. Uh, I particularly love my AirPods just because it integrates very well with my iPhone, but there's really tons of wireless earbuds out there that are really great as well. I just happen to really love my AirPods because I have an iPhone and I actually love both the Pros and the the AirPod 2s. Um, I have a different need for the different ones. Like this one, I sometimes like the fact that I don't have to really fit it in my ear properly. I just put it on and then I'm on the go. Uh, so I usually use this for walking because I still want to hear the surrounding and it's just fast to put it in. Uh, whereas this one, I use it more at home. So especially when I'm editing or when I'm trying to listen to a video while I'm sleeping, but not trying not to make noise. Um, so yeah, I love that this one is noise cancelling. So actually, I actually recommend both. They're both very good. A couple of jewelry pieces that I completely have fallen in love and um, I see myself buying it again if I ever to not have it anymore. And that is this ring. So this is a beautiful silver ring in rhodium plating and it has a little pearl detail with a bunch of crystal uh, bow details there and it's just a very simple dainty ring but look how beautiful it kind of just like dances around my fingers it works so so well with my pearl bracelet which I love wearing um, so from the same company they also uh, make these tennis bracelets which a lot of you also ask about I constantly still get the same questions where's your bracelet from where's your tennis bracelet from so similarly these are also silver base, so sterling silver base, rhodium plating, and um, obviously it's not diamonds, but they do use their in-house crystals, and they're super shiny. I love that they're adjustable because basically you can like, you know, if you have bigger wrists, it does not matter. Uh, on my wrist, they, they fit perfectly on the smallest setting, and I have two different ones. So I have the one that is a princess cut, and I also have the baguette cut, and they're both beautiful. Um, I don't ever stack them, but I'm just putting them both on today for you guys. But look how beautiful and shiny they are. My Chanel bracelet, which I also will 
always be repurchasing the day that I don't have this pearl bracelet anymore if I lost it or whatever I will always repurchase this is my favorite I love that it's graduated I love that there's this pendant if you have a bigger wrist there's plenty of space to also adjust it it's just so beautiful um, it's also really good quality uh, you would think that these are costume pieces but you know Chanel still uses good enough quality material to make their things and as long as you do take care of them they will stay perfect for a long long time so i highly recommend this bracelet i will always repurchase it to continue with chanel jewelry uh, these pairs of chanel stud earrings are like i know they were they were seasonal i don't know if they'll ever make them permanent like they did with the chanel uh, pen, like the really long chandelier ones uh, but if I ever to lose these, I will try my hard just to buy it again because these are just so, so stunning. They are costumes, so obviously, you know, they are expensive for what you pay in terms of material. But in terms of wow factor and in terms of just like having a piece of Chanel that is a statement but without being something that you can't wear every day, I feel like these studs are just the perfect in between. You can wear them every day if you wanted to, but you can also wear them as a statement piece that is not so in your face. So it's very versatile. These are one of my favorite purchases from last year. So I think if you were to buy one pair of Chanel earrings, that these would have to be it, especially because I know not everyone is into the big CC logos. Um, totally get that, but these are so discreet that I think it will it will be good for everybody. So one of the most trusty SLG piece that I have ever used since the day I bought it and still use every day is the six key holder from Louis Vuitton, especially in the canvas version. So mine was purchased in 2013, I think. So it's been a while ago and back then the quality is superb. Uh, glazing wise, there's a bit of cracking and everything, but it's really, it's not peeling. It's still doing magnificent. So the quality back then is just so beautiful and the canvas is so thick. But regardless of how the quality is now, I still feel like something like this especially if you find one that fits really good in your hands and that fits all your keys and that does the job of protecting your keys and the interior of your bag. Love, love, love this piece. It has lasted so long. The quality was absolutely perfect. So another luxury item that I will, I will say in this video that it's a bag that I will repurchase. I think for me, myself, if this was my first bag, I would have been super happy because at the end of the day, these are really expensive purchases. Uh, you know, no one really needs a Chanel bag, but because I love my Chanel and I want it, if this was my first bag, I would have been really, really happy because not only do I get to use it often because it's such a practical style? So I'm getting my cost per wear, but as a first Chanel bag and having the ability to use it often, it's just a wonderful feeling. I would have also added a mini flap in caviar, but because they're not offered right now in the retail uh, in, the, in the recent years, I'm not gonna include that in this video. And I'm gonna say this, I, um, I don't have a classic flap, but I don't have a problem with that. And I would still consider the Chanel 19 as a good, great option as a first bag if if you really don't care about a classic flap, honestly. So yeah, love my Chanel 19. Mine is in lambskin. This season is also in lambskin and the beautiful brown offering. It's just so gorgeous. Um, so yeah, the lambskin on the 19 is just amazing, super hard wearing. I don't have to baby it. Um, I'm careful, but I don't have to baby it. So in terms of ready to wear, I would say that uh, not only is the Balma cardigan that I purchased last year a best purchase of the year, I think I would go as far as saying that these are gonna be repurchased uh, worthy items. I love their blazers, I really do. I just don't get to wear them as often, whereas a cardigan, it's so much easier just, just to just throw it on as either a sweater alone or as a layer ring piece. Like if, if I'm wearing a little tank underneath or a little t-shirt underneath, 
I can throw this on and really just elevate the look. They are a permanent style. I have it in both the black and the white. Obviously not everyone is going to want to spend $2,000 on a garment. So the next best thing that I would recommend uh, and that I would personally repurchase is a good cashmere. So this is one of my favorite cashmere sweater that I have. It's a turtleneck and it's in this beautiful grayish color. I also own the same one in a cream color. It's just a beautiful feeling to be underneath a good fabric that drapes well and that's super easy and very sort of put together. Even though you just have to throw it on top really, you don't have to do anything special. It just pulls the whole look together. This one in particular is from Lily Silk. You guys know that I'm a big fan of their quality. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite, favorite uh, sort of luxury. Actually, this is kind of like entry luxury price because it's so affordable for what they offer uh, because it's pure cashmere. Last but not least, it's something that I cannot show you because I'm already using it right now. It's my new camera. Well, it's actually old now, but I did purchase it last year when it first launched. It's a point and shoot, but I've always done all my videos, even when I first started with points and shoots because I just don't want to fuss with not having things not working. <laughs> I just want a good quality camera that does the job. It's not going to be terrible quality. It's not going to be the best quality, obviously, but uh, so far the ZV-1 has been wonderful. It's really, really good. Uh, Sony is definitely has more of a learning curve compared to Canon. Um, so hopefully you guys find my videos nowadays acceptable because I've played with like the white balance and all the manual settings for a while now and I think I kind of got it right just because I'm working with what I have I don't have studio lighting or anything I just have regular lamps on so uh, so far I think it's been doing quite good and it would be a repurchase item for me my Canon one I've had it since 2015 and I only upgraded it to this one in 2020. So I've actually used my Canon G7X, the first model that they ever introduced in that line for five years. So it's, it's such a great purchase because it averaged out to about $150 per year. And um, I really used the heck out of it and it's still working. It's actually still a great camera, but it doesn't focus well. Um, and it's uh, definitely, you know, inferior in terms of even if it's the same resolution, it's a little inferior in quality compared to the new one. So I'm really happy with the Sony. I love that it has an external mic setting. You can also plug in your USB cable so that you get constant power. So these little things really make your life so much easier if you're into filming. Uh, obviously, if you're not, maybe you don't care, but it's actually a really great camera to have as a personal camera to take on trips with you as well. Um, it does 4K videos as well, so... And it's uncropped. Uh, as far as I remember, it's uncropped 4K, so it's great. Um, so yeah, highly recommend this camera if you guys are looking into a new upgraded point and shoot. Also love the mic that I'm using for my live stream. Apparently I was told that my mic quality or my uh, voiceover quality is really good lately. And I think it's because I have a really good mic. I have the Blue Yeti. I didn't really do a ton of research on it. I just picked that one. At the time of buying the, the mic, it was the only thing available because I guess it was the more expensive one. Everybody bought the cheaper versions of any mics available at the time because it was the pandemic. Everyone was staying at home, trying to get their webcams and things for Zoom. So everything was sold out, but it turned out to be great because I use it every week now on my live streams and it's amazing. I hope that you guys enjoy my list of things that I will always repurchase or that I'll buy again. Obviously some luxury, but also a lot of just lifestyle and everyday things that are very useful and just um, makes my life more easy or more enjoyable. What are some of the things that you would put in this kind of list? Let me know down below. If you're brand new to my channel, I would love to have you back. So please consider subscribing and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.